Good morning, Coach. Pat Freeman from the Buffalo Criterion newspaper. How are you today? Good. How are you, Pat? I had a two-part question for you. I wanted to ask you about the influence of your former coach, Butch Davis, on your philosophy and uh, what he taught you at the University of Miami. Also about Josh's progression as a signal caller since you've been working with him. Um, the interceptions that he's had at the beginning of the season going in into the bye, they're not like the old interceptions where he put the ball in the wrong place. Can you just talk about his decision-making and how he's progressed through the last few years? Yeah, no problem. Um, so obviously with Coach Davis, he's a, a big influence in my life just from playing playing with him and then uh, obviously working, uh, working alongside him uh, a couple of years ago. Um, especially just from a, a leader standpoint, a kind of how organized, how detailed he, he, he's always been. And um, uh, I think he, he really does a great job in just uh, all aspects of, of running a team. So he, he definitely is somebody I've always looked to and, and uh, um, you know, am eager to get advice from when needed. Uh, in terms of Josh, I, I think, uh, I think the, the biggest credit to him is, is this one, you know, we go through our week game planning of, okay, let's put our guys in the right, you know, what we feel like is the best position for us to have success, what plays we feel like uh, attack the defense, you know, well, and then just trust Josh to work progressions and, and read things out and go with the right place with the ball. With the ball. And, and that just, you know, frees you up to just call a game in terms of what you feel like is going to work best and not what you feel like, hey, I've got to get the ball here or I've got, uh, uh, I got to do this for Josh. There, there's a lot, of, a lot of trust there in terms of, you know, he's going he's gonna to read defense, you know, make the right decision, go with the right place with the ball. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that that frees you up a lot as a play caller. All right. Thanks, coach. Yes, sir. All right, Ken, uh, Mark gone here. Uh, welcome back from your bye. Uh, two quick questions. One, just mm -hmm. your number one in the NFL and uh, yards gained. Uh, uh, just what are you most encouraged by about the offense right now? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is just, again, the, the execution with the guys. Uh, um, we put a, a you know, um, they, they have to do a lot of different things. They, they, they're asked to do, you know, some things that maybe they haven't done in the past. They, they're asked to do some, uh, um, you know, be moved around a little bit to, to different spots, no matter what the position is uh, early in the year here. Um, so I think, uh, uh, they've really handled those things well. And, and then they really haven't, haven't blinked in some tough situations. We've had some, you know, tough environments we've had to go in and play against. And, um, they've really done a great job in, in terms of that communication in loud environments on the road, having to deal with that. So, um, there's, there's definitely a lot of encouraging things. And then, uh, the way, especially the offensive line is playing up front. I really feel like they've, they've done a great job kind of joining together, both in the run game and the pass game. And, and they really keep progressing in a, in a direction that's that's very exciting. And then uh, yards after catch was a talking point, uh, you know, point of emphasis in the, after last season. And certainly it's got it's improved. The numbers say and the eyeball test says that, you know, it's, it's been gotten better. What do you think? Uh, how much is that? What do you think of Josh's ability to quickly recognize and exploit defenses when they give him softer underneath coverages? Well, I think it's a it's a big factor of um, just one just offensive success, success in general. Um, I think if if teams are flying out or or they're giving you certain things, um, you know, being smart, not conservative, and and uh, um, not passing something up and hoping for something better is always important for us. So uh, he's done a great job with that. Those guys have really done a great job uh, maximizing rack with the ball in their hand and in space and. I think it's it's really been a, uh, a thing that obviously yes we've stressed and uh, will continue to stress because it's an important facet of of the game to you know be able to get those hidden yards whether it's you know after the catch whether it's knifing north and south for first downs or, or getting that extra yard or two um, all those things I think are, are are just hidden things that that really benefit your football team to win games. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Ken, since you guys are coming off of this bye week, I mean, usually after a normal week, you would be kind of looking back at the game um, on Monday and kind of looking at film and then closing the chapter on, on that game and moving forward. Do you feel like you guys get a, an extra day here to help prepare for the Green Bay Packers? Or how are you guys using an extra Monday coming off of a bye week? Yeah, I mean, it's really a great day just to get the guys back in the groove, you know, get some some meeting time in, get a little walkthrough in, uh, you know, a lift and a run and, and that type of stuff. So it's a good kind of just transition to get them back in the groove of doing things back into their routine, because that's really that's really the biggest thing when you get a little bit of time off, you know, just getting back in your routine, getting back in the flow of kind of, all right, how was I doing things on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and, and kind of get back into that groove again. I think that's important, you know, and uh, being able to have some consistency in, in your routine is important. So I think today, just kind of the way, uh, you know, Sean is, is modeled today, it kind of gels together well with, with what a typical Monday would look like. And um, it, it really kind of helps us get a, a jump start on things. But uh, um, obviously, it's, it's always going to be tough when you're, when you're playing a team like Green Bay in this type of uh, situation. It's, uh, it, they put a little bit of pressure on you to, to have to execute. So it's good to have an extra day to kind of look at those things. Yeah, the jump start that you guys have been able to get on the Green Bay Packers, what have you seen out of their defense? What do you guys have to be ready for on offense playing against them? Yeah, I mean, I think they've really done a, a good year, uh, a good job this year, just kind of uh, forcing teams to have to execute, forcing them have to um, you know, just, just run your, your, run your stuff and, and run it effectively. Um, they do a good job of that. Uh, they, they don't bust coverages. They don't give you a lot of easy, you know, easy layup type throws or, or runs or anything like that. It just, they, they do a great job in, in forcing you to execute. And, and, um, and obviously I think what they have personnel wise, whether it's in the back end with their, their, uh, their secondary or, or the front end with their uh, front seven in terms of, you know, putting pressure on the quarterback and, and doing those types of things, I think poses some issues for, for an offense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ken, I uh, hope you're able to enjoy the week some. Um, I'm curious, um, Josh specifically over the last couple of years has done, has been much better at kind of, we see him improvise, like have to make these throws after four plus seconds after the play has started and, throw across his body those numbers have been specifically good over the last couple of years have improved what has he done to be able to make those plays successful and how have you seen it kind of seen him improve in those uh I think the one of the biggest things is is again just experience as uh as they go you know I think the the quarterback position like a lot of positions in the NFL the more experience you get the more comfortable you are the quicker you can react to things because you've seen you know a lot of different things so I think that that really helps them a lot in terms of, you know, extending plays in terms of um, when when things break down um, or or when things aren't there initially, but you, you still have a good pocket. Um, just the, those those nuances of the position of finding whether it's an outlet or extending the play or or letting guys work for you. I mean, though, all those things just play into the um, umbrella of just the more experience you get, the the more you kind of can. Uh, feel like you've been in those situations before. As a play caller, is it like when you see those plays breaking down and he's directing traffic and kind of running all around, how much trust, I guess, is there at this point that, oh, he's going to make the best decision and make this play work? No, a lot of trust. I mean, I think uh, and it's and it's earned trust because, you know, he's he's made mistakes in some of those situations in the past, but he's learned from those things. And I think that's that's all you can ask for as a coach, you know, um, uh, he's got a ton of physical tools to do those things, but at times in the past, it's like, okay, well, if we get in this situation again, uh, whether it's area of the field, whether it's a decision, um, Hey, uh, let's, let's think about doing it this way or, you know, how, however those things unfold. So uh, I really think, uh, um, that's, that's an earned trust that, that, uh, he has really earned throughout time, whether it's correcting a mistake in the past or, just doing things well uh, continually. And I think um, that's, that's true in a lot of different quarterback play. Again, just kind of the more experience you get, the more you've been around these situations and um, the, uh, uh, the easier some of those things then become or the more natural that they become because it just becomes second nature and, and instinctual then more so than thinking about it. 
And then last one on this for me, um, mm -hmm. I was just curious from your experiences of playing quarterback and like having to deal with plays breaking down and having to make things work. How hard is that to do on the fly? And how do you kind of practice those situations? Cause you don't, you know, you can't really prepare for everything that'll happen. No, it's a great question. Cause like, there's so many, uh, so many defenses are just so good now, you know, whether it's by scheme and, and trying to confuse the, the offense or by personnel, because there are just so many fast athletic, you know, um, um, players out there on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, and the, the skill set is just kind of continuing getting better and better, making it harder for an offense. So you're going to have calls that might not be the, the best call against what you're seeing. You've got to have a lot of faith in you've won the quarterback, but to the offense as a whole, to go out and execute, even though it might not be the perfect play call or, or get out of a bad play into a good play, whether it's a post snap or pre snap uh, with, with the check. So I think there, there's a lot of that because it is, it's, it's a hard game. It's, you know, there's a lot of parody in this league um, and, and you really kind of see that. And I, I definitely appreciate that from, from having to play this, have, having played the position. Awesome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ken, hope you had a good bye week. Um, I know you touched on kind of all the offense, but was curious about the running backs in particular. Just what do you make of that group right now, what they've done so far, and what maybe you want to see the next stretch of the season? Yeah, I've got a lot of faith in that room. I think they've really done a, a great job kind of uh, as the season gone, has gone on, especially just um, getting in that groove, getting that flow. Um, really it's, it's always, it's always hard for, uh, for us with that group, because you've got a bunch of guys in that room, they can all play and all be extremely effective for you. Um, so it, it's a room that got a lot of faith in from a run the ball standpoint to come out of the backfield and catching balls to, you know, pass protection. So, um, I, I'm really excited with the, the way that that room's kind of gelling and, and, uh, continuing to, to grow and get comfortable with their, their expanded roles. You mentioned how, you know, it can be hard when you have so many guys with different roles sometimes. I know Sean already talked about Zach Moss being inactive against Kansas City. Just what have you seen from him so far this season as he balances, you know, trying to carve out that role, but also having so many guys who can be involved in this offense too? No, yeah, he's he's done a great job. He's done everything we've we've asked him to do. Um, he's ran the ball hard. You know, he's he's really gotten some some tough hidden yards in there with uh, with yards after contact and then had some big runs for us as well. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's, it's hard, you know, just the nature of the NFL and, and how many guys are active on game day to, to have everybody up. And, and uh, those are always tough decisions to make. And, uh, but, but Zach's done a, a great job for us and continues to, to improve and, and really continues to show um, the, the physical traits uh, uh, from coming back from the injury that he, that he had previous years and, uh, and really been, been, been explosive, been able to make all the cuts, uh, finish runs physically and, and, and run the style uh, that we're, we're accustomed to him seeing. Awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Coach Dorsey, good morning. Wookie Hawkins, Buffalo Sports and 80. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good, Coach. Uh, how, how did you enjoy your bye week? Uh, it was good. It was good. Yeah, relax and watch some games, and it was nice. Appreciate that. <laughs> now, uh, you know, just looking at those games, how do you, the first six weeks, evaluate yourself as a play caller? I, I think, you know, you continue to grow. You continue to learn things, that, whether it's uh, situationally or, or, you know, um, the process throughout the week. Um, so you're, you're constantly trying to, to grow and evolve and, and um, uh, continually get better, whether it's your process, whether it's kind of how you're doing things, whether it's a, a situational type thing, um, whether it's a, you know, first and 10 type thing in the middle of the field, you know, so I think you're, you're constantly evaluating yourself and, and trying to grow as a, as a, as a play caller and as a coach in general. And I think that's kind of where I'm at for, through the first six weeks. Speaking of that growth coach, you, you got some great balance last game with the run in pass. How, how, how do you, uh, how, how does that continue? Yeah, I think it's, it's always uh, something that you're, you're focused on. You want to be able to have a, a threat of in all areas and put stress on the defense in all areas. And I think that's um, something that's important to us. And, and, um, but at the same time, we're always going to focus on, okay, what, what do we feel like is going to be best to, uh, win this game, whether it's one point or, or more than that, you know, that's, that's always your, your focus going into every game. 
Um, you know, so, so whatever it takes to do that, I think is, is going to be the area of focus for us that week. Um, whether it's more run, more pass, more balance, more, you know, personnel, whatever it might be. Um, I think that's the, the advantage of kind of what we try to do offensively is, is we we're able to attack in, in multiple different ways. Coach, you got two, one that probably, uh, probably the, one of the top duos in the league with Gabe Davis and Stefan Diggs, uh, what they've been doing uh, the past couple of games. How do you get the feel of, you know, the counter scheme, what teams are prepared to do against that duel? Yeah, I think, um, I, I think it's always an adjustment, you know, it's, uh, you can watch all the tape you want going into the week, but it's kind of how you adjust in, in game day, whether they're trying to throw some different wrinkles at you, they're trying to take a certain guy away, whatever it might be. So there's always going to be some adjustments throughout the course of the game and some of those things. But, you know, at the same time, we, we really try to focus throughout the week of um, putting our guys in, in positions uh, where we feel like suits them and uh, where we feel like can best give us the chance to have success on each and every play against the scheme we're seeing. So um, I, I think that uh, that's kind of the main focus and having guys like that really help you do that one from a physical standpoint, but then two from a, a mental and preparation standpoint to allow you to do those things. Uh, those guys really do a great job in terms of, of those areas, uh, you know, uh, on top of the physical traits in which they have. Appreciate your time, coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Hi, Ken. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously, from a playing perspective, you know, during your college career, you know what it's like to be a team that everybody's kind of gunning for. And now in this situation with with the Bills, it seems like everybody um, across the league is just enamored with the Bills and, and how impressive you guys have been. How do you inside the building, what kind of ingredients are there to uh, kind of block out that noise, but also like just on the interior, keeping focused on what you have to do and not letting the expectations, maybe even the pressure kind of leak in. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's something where if you have the focus of, of focusing this week, um, you know, that's the big picture more so than anything. Like this week is the big picture. Winning this week is the big picture. You can't change what happened in the past. You can't predict the future, you know? So, so focusing on the big picture of this week and then the, the, the smaller picture is focusing on this day, you know, so you focus on this day every day, you focus on this play every play, uh, and you have that type of mentality, I think that really kind of helps you block out any, any outside noise. And then, and then just having the understanding of, of you know, every, every week's different. Every week is, is going to be a, a new challenge and a new, um, a new opportunity to go out against great opponents. Because, again, there's so much parity in this league. There's so many good defenses and, and so many different ways that a defense tries to attack you that, you know, you, you really can't lose sight of that. And I think our guys have a, a really good understanding of that. They have a really good understanding that, that we're only six games into the season. You know, there's still so much season left to play. So, um, you know, I think there, there's a lot of factors that go, go into being able to just stay focused week in and week out, um, you know, in order to give yourself a chance each week. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. That's all we have time for today. Thanks, Ken. All right. Thanks, guys.